Hello, welcome again to Engineering Semester Channel. Today let's start the another interesting topics of the WebRTC tutorial series. If you are new to this channel or new to this WebRTC series, please go and watch our introduction part first. Today let us see what is signaling process and why it is required in WebRTC. Let us get started. In the last video we already discussed we will use signaling server in WebRTC. Do you remember? Anyway let us see what is signaling process first. Signaling is the process of setting up, controlling, and terminating a communication session between the clients. Signaling is necessary to communicate between endpoint users in P2P communication. Generally to communicate between two endpoint, major three process needs to be happen. First, session control information need to be shared. Then, exchange IP address and port related information between end users. Last codex and media types of the end user need to be shared. Now let us look why these components are required in the communication. Session control information will determine when needs to be connected, closed and send information between end users. IP and port related information are required to identify the end user and where he or she located. Codec and media type exchange is required to set up the particular resolution and media configuration between end users. Now for time being we can see these data are metadata. Then how this metadata are shared in between end users. Here comes session description protocol, SDP, protocol. SDP will be used for the exchange of metadata. We already know that WebRTC is a web browser based technology. So there should be a server required to exchange the user data initially to set up WebRTC connection. This server is called a signaling server and the process of sharing metadata is called signaling. After the signaling process all the media and data will be exchanged via RTC peer connection of WebRTC. Okay. Now we understood what is signaling. Next let us look how signaling will help WebRTC. Signaling servers doesn't help for WebRTC process. They just assist for passing the messages or metadata between the users. We can write server with the help of server technologies like WebSocket, Socket IO, SIP etc. After that signaling RTC peer connection API used by WebRTC to create a connection between peers. And communicate audio, video and datas. That means, after signaling the WebRTC will send media data directly without the help of signaling server. This is a sample illustration of signaling process. Suppose, two users want to connect each other for a call. First user A. Send request to signaling server. Then signaling server send a response back to user A. With the request for getting the user A metadata. Once server got the metadata. Server send the request to user B. That user A want to communicate with you. Now user B send response back that I am ready for the communication. Then server respond back to user B with the message. I need your metadata. After getting metadata from user B. Server exchange metadata between user A and user B. That's it. Signaling is done now. After that the direct communication between the user will be done through RTC peer connection of WebRTC. Now we understood that signaling is the process of sharing the metadata between the end users. Next let us look how can we get the public IP address of each user. For that another protocol or framework we have to use. That is Interactive Connectivity Establishment or IC. ICE technique helps to communicate two nodes directly in the internet. In network address translators and firewall make difficult for end users to communicate with each other. Then how connection possible? Here comes another interesting frameworks. Session traversal utilities for NAT and traversal using relays around NAT's protocols to resolve this issue. So basically ICE is the technique which uses stun and turn protocols to establish a connection. Next, we have to understand what is stun and turn. If an end user is under a NAT which has a local IP address, then it is very difficult to reach the end user from outside the local network. If this is happen, the end user can request its public IP address from a stun server. Now this public IP address can reachable by other end user. 
then establishment of the connection is possible. So Stun Server will help to get client public IP address if it is under NAT. But this always will not work if the user is under symmetric NAT. So what will be next to get public IP address? Here we are using Turn Server. Turn Server can be used to get public IP address to establish a connection to the end user if it is under symmetric NAT. So in short, Turn and Stun will help to get user public IP address. Stun is commonly used if it is under NAT. Turn is used if user under symmetric NAT. But there is slight problem. Stun not required after the connection establishment but turn is required for whole session. Most of ICE framework uses stun as default. Now we understood that ICE can find a connection using stun and turn server for the end users. Next, let us look how turn and stun used programmatically in WebRTC connection. Before that you must understand that you can get free public stun server IP address. But turn server always password protected. Because it is used most of the cases and required more traffic. Below is the sample code to connect turn and stun server configuration. Here you can see that turn is password protected. Using this configuration, WebRTC is creating RTC peer connection. Don't worry, if you did not understand the code, we can see further coding in upcoming videos. I think it is enough for today. Let us conclude. We have understood that signaling is the process of exchanging peer metadata, example media type codec etc. ICE framework is required to connect peers as directly as possible in signaling. ICE uses of stun and turn server to get public IP address. Stun is default and turn is costly also password protected. That's it for now. I hope you got a better idea about WebRTC signaling process, stun, and turn. Let us see more in the upcoming videos. If you are thinking this is informative, then like and share subscribe. Also support us. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.